As the build of the freight yard progresses, it's worth mentioning the difference between Insule Frog, Electro Frog and Unifrog. And today we're looking at Unifrog and installing one. So if you don't understand it, perhaps this just might be the video for you. Hi, welcome back to Chatty Model Railway. I'm Charlie. And in this video, we're going to install this Unifrog curved point into the freight yard. Easy. But I thought it's worth a mention before we progress into that, the differences between these three Code 100 points, because this one here is an insule frog, this one here is an electro frog, and this one here is a unifrog. So what's all that about then? Well, it's simply down to reliability. Now, if I look closely at this insule frog point, you can see here that this section of the frog, sorry, this area here is known as the frog, and this area here is made of plastic. Lovely. Now, it actually means that as your train comes along this track for 22 millimetres, there is no power available between this point and this point. So your train having multiple wheels, multiple pickups and all this sort of stuff, hopefully it should get enough power to drive over this insulated section. Now, for improved running, we have this one here. And now you can see that the frog is all metal. So what's the distance involved? Well, the wheel will leave about here and pick up about there. So it's about 10 millimetres without power. And of course, things like stay alive or keep alive, as some people call them, all help to um, keep this uh, running consistent. Now, new kid on the block. Unifrog has been available for many years with Pico um, in their sort of bullhead range. But now um, they brought this particular point from the set track range into the streamline range. Now, I spoke with Steve Haynes at the weekend. He was at the Ali Pali show um, and he's a sales manager for Pico. And he mentioned why they had brought this point, refashioned it and brought it into the streamline range because there is no really sort of tight-ish curve point available. Now, this is the ordinary curve point for streamline. And as you can see, um, it's a much more sort of um, laid back, shallow curve, whereas Sometimes in fiddle yards and that sort of area, you need a sharper turn, which I do. So what's going on here? Well, as you can see, the frog here is actually insulated from these rails. There is a tiny gap on go the glasses. So the distance with no power, whoops, is about 15 millimetres. But it would be considerably more if this were an insulated frog because it, the, the, the other one was 30 millimetres without any uh, pickup within this area. So it's a vast improvement. So what happens with these frogs and how do you wire them up? So now let's look at the differences in installing these things. Well, here is your insulated frog point and um, because it's unpowered the only wires un under here are the ones that transfer power from there to there there is no difference it's just a basic point no extra wire required no insulated rail joiners but as with all points when you throw the point you isolate the other rail so by throwing this point here these tracks now have no power and then when you throw it the other way, these ones have no power. It's just basic physics, really, of how they're designed. OK, no extra wiring. Now we come on to the electro frog point. So here's the frog that's that's, um, that power is supplied to it. And underneath, you'll find a wire. And this wire is what um, the power is transmitted in on. And the power prompt to it comes from your point motor underneath this end. So when the point is in this position then this rail is powered and it's the power from this rail that's transferred onto the frog when you transfer it the other way then it's the, it's the power from this rail that goes to the frog 
There is, of course, a complication. By changing the polarity of the frog, you need plastic insulated rail joiners on the end of the frogs. Piece of cake. Been doing it for years, haven't we? Now we get on the new kid on the block. What's all that about then? So, there is a wire underneath. And if you choose to use it, then what do you do? Well, you would wire it back to the point motor. So when you change the point, then the power from this rail here would go to the frog. These rails remain live with their standard current all the time. It's only the frog that changes polarity. So when you throw it that way, then the frog becomes powered from this line. Likewise, this way it becomes powered from this. Now, of course, you might not want to get into all this sort of stuff. So what do you do? Well, it's simply you just don't power it and it just acts as an insulated, uh, as, a, as an insule frog point. But how about some advice? I like advice. If I were to install this on my layout and I didn't want to go to the hassle of putting in a point motor and switching frogs, what would I do? Well, what I suggest you do is you get your wire, excuse me, you drill a hole in your baseboard and drop the wire through. Similarly, you drill a 10 mil hole where the centre of the of your throw bar is. The reason for that is if you just if you're just into throwing your points by hand, fine. But if you come back at a later date and think, I want I would like to have a control panel now to throw my switches, then you have the hole drilled in which to place your point motor and of course you've got access to the cable to connect it to your point motor to switch the frog. That's the sort of beauty of unifrog points. Now it's also worth mentioning that what we also do on these points here to improve their running characteristics is we often put a shorting link across these two terminals and also across these two terminals and then we snip these wires that Pico have so generously provided to allow this system to work. It improves the reliability by putting power across these areas of these of these rails. Lovely. So what about the Unifrog? Well, they're, they're a, a step in front of us now because Pico have put in a joiner, a, a link across there and across there. So these two here are connected and also across here and here to improve that running. So this one and this one are connected. Similarly, this one and this one are connected. I think they've made a darn good job of this. Now, speaking to Steve Haynes, trying to peel away a little bit of um, Pico intentions, let's say, they are thinking of bringing in other Unifrog points into the Streamline range. And I think one of the first ones they're going to be looking at is my old favourite, the three-way point. So that would be a great asset. So I wish them well, and I do hope they move on that uh, quite quickly. And of course, they can then do away with the uni, uh, sorry, the electro frog and the uh, insular frog ranges, and just have one point of a certain uh, size or um, dimensions, and it, they will all have a uni frog facility. Beautiful. Okay, I do hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, then please leave a comment down in the comment section. And also, there should be a video up here where I compare uni, where I compare insular frog and electro frog points and go through uh, the drawbacks with and the advantages of of both designs. Right. Hope that makes sense. If you're enjoying this video, have you subscribed yet? Please hit the old subscriber button. And if you are a subscriber. Hit it anyway, just to check you still are subscribed, because I know there's been some funny goings on in YouTube. OK, right. Now, let's fit this, fit this to the board. Now, this is where we ended up last week with the two MP10 point motors powering the three-way point. But there's a problem now, because just here goes that Unifrog point. And to power the Unifrog point, there's an overlap because it's just so close to this point. So I'll flip the board over and show you what I mean. Now looking at it from this side, 
we have a point mold motor approximately there another one there quite close underneath aren't they now if I put in my unifrog point into about there put that one back and as you can see I would have to put this one in about there now this is getting a bit close and a bit silly and the other thing is is these have as you can see a access port here for the terminals now I can't get to it on this side because they are facing the wrong way around but I would rather have it on this side because it's that side there that gives me access underneath right so that means this point has to move so if I move this point out a bit pop this back in and we kind of get out to about here makes sense and now of course I've got to get a piece of track in here now this outer track is the same as a piece of third radius curve so I've sliced a piece off and if I fit this little segment onto here don't worry about the missing sleepers I've always replaced those when we come to dress it properly right so now we have a smooth curve coming around there if I refit the point motors, motors as it were they will come in there and then this one here will go there giving me access to the port that kind of makes sense to me so what do I need to do now well <clears throat> obviously we've got some drilling and soldering to do so I've got to drill some holes through the board to locate this and I've also got to do the frog wire where was that back here and I've also got to put a set of cables on here actually to power the the frog uh, the, the point itself I won't put any cables onto this little link this little link will supply feed from both this point and this point so I don't envisage any poor connectivity there there is one other thing and that's the use of the jig to give me the alignment marks on where to um, drill down my holes for the alignment of the point, the point motor. Now this is a, an ordinary point jig so it's a case of kind of wiggling it around a bit and trying to figure out exactly where the holes will be and it's not hard really it's about there so it's just a case of lining them up um, and, and drilling these outer holes through. So let's just crack on with that. So putting the jig roughly in place then it's just a case of drilling the four holes as I did in the last video Clearly this time there was a little bit of guesswork involved and this is not screwed to the baseboard. So there's my holes there. If I put that, put the point into the centre position and put the marker hole there for the point motor itself, the, for the actuating wire to come through, that's that one. And then I need a hole here for the frog wire. I'm not exactly sure where the frog wire is on this. So it is here oh, smack in the middle of the frog then what a surprise right so if I pop that back in so I'm going to drill a hole here and we should be sort of good to go that all seems pretty good so now it's time to do a bit of soldering now before I start soldering cables I need to find a place where I can put my droppers so I'm going to I'm going to use that piece of visible track there so if I cut out this piece of webbing here and this piece of webbing here I can then bring the two wires down and then they'll go through there at the baseboard so I just need to remove these two little bits
and there we can see nice surfaces for me to solder to. Right, now if I fit this back in a moment, I need to drill a hole for where this goes through. Lovely. Right, I just solder on some more wires. Um, for the soldering and stuff, this, I did all this in the last video, so I won't go into, it, into any great depth. Um, but if you find soldering a challenge, next week's video is going to be something else, honestly, because the amount of soldering I have to do to the Code 100 Insule Frog double slip is incredible. So, um, so do, do stay tuned for that one. So here we are with the soldering complete, and I've just used a green cable for the frog as usual, and that's 702, and the black and red for the uh, track feed is in 1602. All straightforward, and so hopefully now all I need to do is feed these cables through, and then secure the point to the board using the, the um, small screws that I got from um, buffers down in, um, Devon, and if you ring Maria, I'm sure she'll send you some if they will be your method of securing these things um, of choice. I'm not using copy decks like I usually do to secure this. Not, and this the reason for is, is in case I've made a great big mistake, let's say, I don't have to peel it back off the, uh, off the board. You, with copy decks, obviously it's quite uh, an easy glue to move but I, um, I, I would rather kind of err on the side of caution with this little job and make sure that we are, um, we have some, um, what would you say, uh, an element of mobility. I can take these up and move them around because it's only in screws, screw form sort of thing. So I have some flexibility. Right, that's in place. Screw this down and then flip the board over. Yep, looking fine. Right, let's flip it. So here are the four holes from where I drilled through from the other side and I just pop a piece of um, cork to give the, uh, for the base of the point motor to sit on. And uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I still haven't got the right screws to screw this down because I'm using the same countersunk ones that I used last time. Shameful, I know. I made the mistake last time of sort of over tightening these and bending the the uh, the unit because the cork didn't cover the whole of the base. Well, I sorted out this time. I was rather fortunate <laughs> earlier. These cables only just cleared the edge of this boss, um, but hey, sometimes you're lucky. And with this secured loosely in place, then we need to fit the, the uh, armature wire and uh, give it a test. Lovely. And to do the basic testing as usual, I'm just using a smoke alarm battery to uh, test the, actu the actuation of the point motor. And all seems well. Now the way I align these little beauties, um, it's, it's quite clever really, um, because the Actuating arm is held in by this center screw, but if you loosen these outer two screws and don't loosen them off too much, it 
it gives you lateral movement so you can line it up um, with your with the hole underneath and then obviously you can sort of tweak it um, left and right um, so it goes into the the, um, the the correct length of throw throw, throw um, this having a, a six millimeter setting so it's a case of pushing this down into the hole through the um, the switch arm of the point switch arm you know what I mean, um, through the hole in the point and then adjusting this so that the point moves properly over its right over the right distance. And then when it's finished its, its throw, it's a stall motor, so then it stops drawing the current. So it's just a case now of, of getting the board on end, as it were, threading it through and then sort of tweaking it. And so after a few uh, minor tweaks to get the plate in the right position, It works just fine. Lovely. Hopefully you can see it in action. Lovely. So there we go, it's coming along just fine. What have I got to do now? Well, there's obviously just two tracks going up here which aren't any big shakes. But this is where the major issues are because now I've got to install two Code 100 Insule Frog double slips. And that takes us to next week. Now before I sign off, it's just worth mentioning that I'm running another YouTubers course down here in Somerset on Sunday the 12th of May. The details are in the Show More tab or drop me an email to chadwickmorrowrailway at gmail.com if you're interested or perhaps you know someone who is. Anyway. As we, as we wrap this one up, um, I'd like to thank the patrons as usual for making it all possible. There's the old button to be a subscriber. Remember, subscribing is free and a video here and here. But I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.